And so obviously REI Lab Columbia, we are set here today. Um, we've already gone through that. And so REI Lab, this is what I want to explain to everyone if you don't know, if you haven't seen this before. Um, our company is was founded at Lucas Properties. Uh, but we brought together REI Live Columbia for the opportunity for us to all get together, network one-on-one -on -one or through Zoom, and to learn from each other, and, and most importantly, learn from experts in real estate investing space. So we've got a ton of experts that we've brought in, and we're on this uh, virtual, uh, virtual deal finding and deal execution kick because we're all at home. So that's where Jamil fits in. We're excited about that. And then uh, Freedom Finders, guys, that's that's how our one-on-one -on -one coaching program, that's our mentorship. We have a couple of people uh, doing the Rehab Renegades right now, which is really fun and they're learning a ton. Uh, and if you see any marketing for Columbia Cash Home Buyers, feel free to like it on Facebook and share it to everyone because that's how we find good deals. So uh, if you want to push that, I'm more than happy for you to do it. Uh, I want you all to know if you're here that we want you to have an agenda. We want you to to know why you're in this space, why you're listening to this Zoom, or why you're talking to these people. Uh, and, and that's uh, for your own business. It's, it's how you are going to succeed, and we want you to try to find that out. Don't just come here uh, just wide open with no idea what you're doing. Start narrowing that down. If you're brand new and you're just wanting to learn about real estate, well, pick a, pick a path, think of something, and start going towards it, all right? Because there's so many different things in real estate. You can get lost and just stuck by analysis paralysis. So start thinking of, of why you're why you're doing this. All right, uh, what what you're going to expect from us is exactly what I just told you. It's it's we rely on experts uh, in many facets of this business and and to try to bring a broad base of knowledge. Um, we are education driven, so we are going to try to get as much education as possible. Uh, but there's no need for education if you don't take action. So that's where our coaching comes in. That's where our networking comes in. It's, it's take that education and put it into action. And that's what I'm excited about talking to Jamil about because they're all about action there. Um, so yeah, we will to go over all kinds of things, wholesaling, rehabbing, rentals, anything that, that you can think of. We've probably had someone here to talk about it or we've talked about it or we've done it. So ask your questions, get involved, all right? So just jot these down, uh, put it on your, agenda. Uh, we, we hope to be back in person again, but guys, you know, we just don't know yet. We don't know when people will be comfortable with 100 people in one room. Um, we'll see. So, you know, we'll keep doing Zoom calls as long as we have to. I do want to reach out and, and let you guys know that these are our partners. Uh, these, all of these partners have stepped up in a big way to provide funding to continue this REI Live, uh, especially paying for um, our spaces, our events, um, all the back end things, because without them, we would have to charge and you all are benefiting from having free membership. So I'm pumped about that. And if you need anything from any of these partners, let me know. We have each one has, has committed to give either a discount or a promo item or something for our RM Lab guests so, or members. So these are the people that we work with. We know them all. We've vetted them all. Um, most of these are in our business every day, all day. So, uh, and Tag Thompson, that's the go offer down there. He was here a couple, couple weeks ago, or a couple months ago. All right. So I'm going to leave that. And Jamil, it's it's all about you now, man. It's all about Jamil. I'm going to um, stop my share and go back to the chat. Make sure nobody needed anything from that. Um, Hey, I see, I see y'all over there in Facebook land looking great. And look at you, Jamil, you got it up there, man. Woo! Look at that. Y'all give him I'm, a big round of applause. I'm so uh, untechnical, guys. So this is uh, um, new for me. I appreciate everyone giving me a pass on, <laughs> on you know, being like terrible with uh, a, a laptop. I, I work from this, right? Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. So I, uh, this is my tool, but um, we're here on a computer. This is, this is Virusville 2020, and uh, I've had to become uh, more laptop accessible. So thank you all for showing up. Uh, there's 12 of you I see in here. How many uh, members that aren't uh, part of the REI live team are, are present with us today? Do you know, Andrew? 
Um, I think everyone on the Zoom is a member. Um, we're missing, I mean, we have, we have a lot more members, but as you know, the Zoom calls are a little bit more difficult, but in Facebook, I'm seeing about, I don't know if it, it's not tallying, but I see about 30 people watching, 20 Beautiful. or 30 on Facebook. Hi, nice to meet everybody. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jamil Damji. I am one of the founders and owner of a company called Keegley. We are uh, the nation's top wholesaler. We are doing anywhere between 65 to 100 transactions on a month-to-month -month basis. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, we obviously, in the first couple of weeks of March, everyone was, or the, sorry, the last two weeks of March from the 15th till about the 1st of April, um, everyone was really worried, right? Nobody knew what was going to happen, and, and that included us. Um, but since then, we have seen volume of sales return back to normal, which is exciting. Um, retail housing is still very robust. And so uh, I'm happy that all of you are continuing on in your journeys as real estate investors. Those of you that have been able to survive the shutdown and the lockdown and all the time that um, has been taken away from working, you know, out there in the field with sellers and, and, and talking about lead gen and whatnot. Um, now is the time for efficiencies, right? Now is the time to really tighten up what you've got going on in your business. And uh, I'm going to talk to you guys today about dispositions. And the reasons for that, guys, is because at Keegley, we're known nationwide as the best at dispositions to do it, hands down. I'm proud of that because uh, I work really hard with my team to, to make that a reality, right? We, we've got a great brand. We are known across the nation at being good at this. And today, what I want to do is I want to share with you um, how this slogan, all roads lead to Keegley, actually happened, right? It's a saying that people have in, in every market that Keegley's in. And the reason for that is, for whatever reason, uh, every deal will find its way to Keegley, whether it be through a wholesaler, whether it comes from a seller, whether it comes from an agent. We've just done a good enough job at becoming a part of the wholesale zeitgeist that we tend to see it all. Um, and, and what I want to share with you guys are some of our disposition secrets. So how did we become the best at dispositions? So uh, this presentation is called Dispo Secrets. Uh, and there are 10 that I'm going to go over with you guys. All right. So this is the full presentation. Uh, and essentially what I mean by disposition secrets are our disposition, if you guys aren't, aren't familiar, disposition is the selling of your wholesale transaction. So when you're selling your contract, you're dispositioning the contract. That's what we're going to focus on. The top 10 strategies that we talk about are urgency timeline, maximizing visibility, presentation, the five-day the five day sales sequence we go through at Keegley, how to leverage other wholesalers' lists, how to change the angle, sending deals to agents, leveraging Facebook groups, um, following up, and reaching out to the top email openers, all right? So those are going to be the sections we're going to go over. Um, urgency timeline, all right. So this is pretty self-explanatory, guys. A buyer's urgency obviously diminishes over time. So your deal is fresh, and a buyer's urgency is, is, highest, is highest in the first one or two days of your deal being inked. Uh, but as your deal sits, so as you've sent out your first email selling your contract and as a, as a few days go by, as time passes, you can see that the drop is an exponential dip, meaning that your buyer's interest in your property exponentially decreases as time goes by. So that means that pricing is absolutely paramount to making sure that your buyers are going to pay top dollars top dollar for your property uh, in this specific time. So uh, urgency is definitely buyer specific. There are two types of buyers. There's your fast paced, ready to go buyer, much like myself. If someone sends me a deal, I'm basically asking for the following things. Address, picks, price. If I can get those and the numbers make sense and the picks look good and the address works and I can pull it up, I'm a buyer right? I can commit over the phone. I'll send a text. I'll e-sign over the phone um, and I'll close and, and no one has to worry about that being a deal getting done. 
The other side of that coin are buyers that need more time. And there's going to be buy that doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make them un not real. It just makes them different. Right. And so the second slower paced buyer is, is going to take anywhere between one and three days to do their due diligence before they're going to pull the trigger. Now, some of the obligations that your slower paced buyer are going to need to fulfill are hard date obligations, right? And some of those examples are hearing back from a hard money lender, maybe getting confirmation from an attorney on the documents that you're using. You know, assignments tend to really confuse people. And so there may be wanting to get their attorneys to read over your assignment. Also, sometimes buyers want to physically put their eyes on a house. Uh, just in order to make sure that they're buying what you're saying they're buying, right? So um, those are going to be specific examples of hard date obligations your buyer might need to overcome. Um, this is one of those uh, phrases, guys, that I have seen uh, kill more deals than anything else. And, and this is when I've sold a deal to a buyer, okay, and I've, and I've sent them a contract, and I send them an email or a text message, and I say, just sent the contract via DocuSign for you to sign. Did you get it, right? Um, when I say, did you get it, that, that answer is yes or no. Yes or no. If they don't answer yes and, and they don't reply, I say, did you get it? And if it's a no, I resend. But when I have said, let me know if you got it, just the change in that phraseology between this and that has torn apart more deals than ever because what I've done is I've given a buyer the opportunity to think longer. I've let them have my contract in their inbox and, and now they can just say they never got it, right? The, now I've left it in their, in their ball, the ball in their court to, to let me know when they wanna let me know. So guys, when you're sending a contract to your buyers, make sure you're specific, make sure you're giving them only one of two ways to answer the question. Did you get it, yes or no? If yes, sign now. If no, I'll send again. So uh, I wanted to throw that out there, guys, because I have seen deals unravel over just those, over that phrase. You wouldn't believe how many deals you'll, you'll actually complete by being more intentional with the way you speak to your buyers. This chart here is probably one of the most interesting ones. Because we're Keegley and because we do a thousand deals a year, uh, that's not an exaggeration, guys. We literally do a thousand deals a year. Um, because we have such a high volume, it's given us access to statistics. And having access to that kind of a sample of information has allowed us to determine what the best day and time of the week is to send out a wholesale deal and sell it. So what we're talking about here are open rates. And what I mean by open rates are when you send your deal out via an email platform, whether it be MailChimp, Close, um, you know, whatever CRM or, or email platform you're using, um, eye contact, whatever it is, uh, open rates are the, the percentage of, of people that are opening your email, right? So if you guys see here, open rates are highest on a Monday, but they're still pretty good on a Sunday. And so what I have found is many wholesalers decide it's not, they don't want to work on Sunday. They feel like, oh, there's no one going to do deals on a Sunday. I can tell you that lots of deals are done on a Sunday. So if you aren't the type that decides to take the week off for prayer or, or you know, reflection or family time, and you are working on a Sunday, but you've decided not to work because you think there's no activity, you're wrong. You will have an open rate of at least 21.58% on a Sunday. So I would suggest working all the days, right? So um, the best day of the week is Monday. The worst is Sunday, but it's really not that far off from Friday. So I think it's still worth doing deals or, or trying to market on a Sunday. This is a very interesting chart because it tells us what time of the day is best to send your blast at. Now, if you guys look at the time of day at 6 a.m., right? So if I open, if I send a blast out at 6 a.m. with a property, look at how many people are opening that, that email. No one, right? No one's opening that email because they're sleeping or they're, they're drinking coffee or they don't care, right? It's too early. Um, so 6 a.m. is the worst time to send your wholesale deal out. But if you wait just an hour and you go to seven, you're at 18.52%. So there's activity. But look at how that number increases throughout the day until you get 
around two o'clock, okay? So the afternoon, 2 p.m. is the height of activity for your email to be open. And it starts to decrease after two until about three, maybe, you know, four o'clock. But what's super interesting, guys, is the open rate at 7 p.m. Look at that. 27.68%. So if I was a betting man and I wanted to send my deal out at the highest, on the best day of the week, at the highest open rate time of the day, I would send my blast at Monday at 7 p.m. All right? But I would not wait until 8 because look what happens. We're back to zero again. And guys, this is from thousands and thousands and thousands of, of email data points, right? Like, like zero is really, really hard to get. <laughs> a zero is really hard to get. So, so don't wait that hour. If you're going to send out a blast and you want the maximum eyeballs on your blast, Monday at 7 p.m. Now, maximizing visibility. So here we're talking about when you're first adding a buyer to your buyer's list, what happens to that buyer's open rates uh, as time progresses, right? So um, the first email autoresponder, so that's when I first added a buyer to my buyer's list. We've talked and, I, and he said yes, or she said yes, I wanna be on your buyer's list. I wanna see your distressed um, uh, properties that have equity, send me your deals. 40 to 60% of the first email will be opened, which is awesome, right? But if you look, email two, there's a, big, there's a big drop, right? So the second email I send, only 30 to 50% of that second email is gonna get, sent, is gonna get opened. And then from this, within the first six months, that number starts to drop to about 25 to 40, and, it's, and it finds its average of around 14%. So this is what that means, guys, all right? 14% of your efforts for adding buyers will actually be buyers that are opening your emails and responding and, and interested in doing deals with you. So for every 100 people you add to your buyers list, 14 of them are going to engage. That's it. So I've seen a lot of guys out there that'll say, oh, I, you know, I work on my buyers list. I don't need to, I, I got buyers, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't think it's important because they've been selling their deals to a few guys over and over and over again. Well, here's what happens when you do that. You heard the saying, don't put your eggs in one basket, right? Well, that's exactly what you're doing there. When your business is dependent upon one or two or five buyers, when those guys get busy, when those guys go broke, when those guys get divorced, guess what happens to your business? It goes away because you've relied on a small group of people for the livelihood of you and your family. That's not the way to do this. So my suggestion is build your buyers list broad. Remember that for every hundred people you add, 14 of them, only 14 are actually going to engage with you and do business. And that's not even do business. That's just engage, open your emails and read what you're writing. Right? So, this is definitely work, guys, but if you do it diligently, you can build something meaningful, something that's going to last. Now, presentation is super important, and, and the reason why I talk about this, I, I, you know, I, I sometimes feel like people are going to think I'm mocking them by, by, by doing this section of the, of the uh, presentation, but, but I have to because I, I, can, I can't tell you how many wholesalers have sent me deals where the pictures were just complete garbage, right? And what they're not realizing is that presentation sells a deal. You've got to take the right photos, all right? So wide angles of each room, um, you want to shoot from the stomach, uh, you want to make sure your phone is parallel to the ground. All of these uh, items that I've listed here, guys, they're definitely, definitely um, items that uh, are, are, are important from a photography standpoint, but they're gonna make your presentation better and, and making the house look sexy is gonna make the house sell. So this is just as important in wholesale transactions as it is in retail transactions. I've put together a picture hit list. So these are all the photos that you wanna be taking of a house. Now guys, I, some, I, some of you might be like getting carpal tunnel, writing this stuff down. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it to you guys. I'm gonna give this presentation to everybody that's joining us 
everybody that's joining us present live now, everyone who's watching this on a replay later, this is all you've got to do for me to email you this picture hit list. Follow me on Instagram at J-D-A-M-J-I, at J-D-A-M-J-I. Um, Andrew, if you wouldn't mind writing that in the chat so everybody can see it, post it in the Facebook group as well, at J-D-A-M-J-I. Send me a DM and say, Jamil, send me the disposition presentation, include your email address and I'll send you this. Uh, and, and you'll also then be on my Instagram and I give away free content there all the time. So uh, let's be friends. Um, so that's the picture hit list. This is also a great list to send to sellers if you're talking to sellers right now that are, are fearful of you coming over to their house because of COVID. Uh, I have used this list for sellers as a, as a shot um, instruction manual, basically, for me to get an idea of what the condition of the house is. So this is also a great resource and tool to send to sellers so that you can get an idea of what the, the, pick, the property actually uh, is like. Again, on presentation, guys, elevation matters. Front elevation is, matters most. If you, any of you have done fix and flip rehabs, you'll know that the front of the house typically sells the house. Why? Because that's what people see when they're looking at the pictures right off the hop. And, and more or less, retail buyers are super interested in, in cute elevation. So uh, make that be a part of what is in, in your buying criteria and make sure you're showing off the elevation when you're sending pictures of your wholesale deals. Here's some examples of some um, absolute garbage that has been sent to me by wholesalers. If you look over here, can you see my arrow? Can you see this? No? All right. I, I'm pointing at the top left picture. Um, over there, what you can see is they didn't show me that there was a garage. The, the photo was cropped off. Um, they didn't take the time just to cross the street and take a full picture of the front elevation so I could tell what the house looked like, right? Below that is, again, the other half of the house, totally crazy. The, how, the picture next to that is a garage. Like, why wouldn't you want to just send the entire front elevation shot? So I'm giving you guys examples of what wholesalers have sent me so that you don't make those same mistakes when you're sending out your pictures to your buyers. Make sure you're crossing the road, actually taking a picture of the entire elevation so that they know what materials they're working with. The next item here, guys, is when we're talking about pricing, right? So price dropping is, is, is something that's a part of the business. You know, we're all trying to maximize our profits on a deal. And so sometimes we get a little aggressive on pricing our wholesale deals. Well, here's what happens um, when you overprice, all right? Um, overpricing means your deal's not going to sell and you're definitely going to need a price drop. So when we're doing that, we, we all do it. I do it myself. My team does it every once in a while. We're, we're really intentional and good with pricing, but on the occasion we screw up and we overprice a property. So how do we reduce a price? What terminology do we use to indicate that we're doing a price drop? So the ways that you don't do it is you don't send an email saying reduced price, price drop, limited time, last chance. Last chance is my favorite actually. What is last chance actually saying? I'm about to cancel this deal, guys. My inspection period is running out. Someone buy this before I have to cancel. I can guarantee you that they're all just waiting for that email to go and leave. And they're going to be knocking on that seller's door very quickly to scoop the deal out from underneath you. So don't say stuff like that. Um, the better way to describe it would be new price, renegotiated price with the seller, or just don't talk about it. I have price dropped a house and never even mentioned it on my blast and no one has been wiser and I've sold it, no problem. So when you're price dropping guys, make sure you follow those rules. This is the five day sales sequence that we go through at Keegley. So when we get a deal in, um, a, a deal was typically gonna sell in the first five days or it's not gonna sell, hands down. Uh, we're not a two week, turn kind of company. We're five days, it's in, it's out, you know? Um, and the reason for it is because of how we ap approach the sales process. So what you can see on day one, what we do, our disposition reps are usually texting on day one. So if you send a deal to Keegley for us to sell for you, you can, you can expect this, this sequence. 
day one, all of our disposition reps will be texting the deal out to our VIP buyers list. On day two, if it hasn't sold, we will email it to our highly qualified email list. On day three, if it hasn't sold, now we're doing more continual uh, personal outreach. Uh, now these are the secondary buyers that are coming in to see the property. Uh, those ones that wouldn't buy off the pictures and price and, and address. So this is where we get into that second type of buyer type. Uh, and if we haven't sold a deal by day four, we blast it to our full list. And at the end of day five, if the deal hasn't sold, it very likely isn't going to sell. Uh, it's probably overpriced or just in too rough condition for anyone to want it. Um, but we typically know 99.9% .9 of the time whether or not a deal is going to move within the first five days. And to be intentional about your dispositions, you want to adopt the exact same timing process. How to leverage other people's buyers list. So, um, guys, this was how I did business when I first got in the game. Uh, I, like many of you, was an acquisition wholesaler. I was dedicated to just getting deals under contract. But building a buyer's list wasn't sexy to me. I wasn't interested in doing all that data mining. I wasn't interested in all these systems and techniques that I've been talking about. At that time, I was really just wanting to talk to sellers and do more deals. And so what I did was I reverse engineered um, leveraging other people's buyer's list so that I could focus doing the things that I did best. And so how I did that is I was looking at which wholesalers were the most active in my market and I would see who was sending out the best deals. I would then reach out to that disposition wholesaler and I would ask them if they would be interested in JVing with me on a seller direct deal I had. I can't tell you guys how powerful that strategy is because when you are leveraging other people's buyers list, you are now exponentially growing your list. So if you look at this example, uh, you're subscribed to a wholesaler's list or a wholesaler subscribed to yours, then they send it to their list, right? And you can see how that multiplies and your one email has now branched out and, and reached 3,500 people. I mean, guys, imagine being able to send one email and hit 3,500 people actively, right? That's awesome distribution. So make sure that you're cooperating, you're collaborating with other wholesalers in your market and you are leveraging their buyers list so that you can exponentially grow your exposure to your deals. Another real amazing approach on selling a deal is changing the angle, right? Highest and best use is by far the biggest takeaway that I could tell you uh, for this slide. There was a, and I'll give you guys an example. I, I'm, I, you know, Pace, my other half, loves telling stories. I'm, I'm a little bit less on the storytelling, but I'll tell you guys a story. So there was a deal in Phoenix, Arizona uh, that an agent was having a very hard time selling. It was a, a, a house, a mansion, a beautiful mansion in Arcadia, uh, Arizona, and she was selling it for $950,000. And it had been on the market for over six months. And she reached out to me and she asked, if I could help her with the deal. She knew I was a buyer and I was looking at the deal and I looked at the deal, I think the same way everybody else looked at the deal uh, and passed, right? I was looking at the deal as a mansion uh, that was you know, on a one and a half acre piece of land um, that I couldn't do anything with. Like it was, it was really, uh, you know, I thought, oh, it's priced high for retail. Like it, it, this is already a mansion. I can't fix this and flip it. I can't, I don't, I don't see a deal here. Now that's the way I looked at it. And that's the way everyone was looking at it for the first six months. But when I really looked at it, I, I, I dug in deeper and I looked at the zoning. And what I ended up finding out there was that the zoning allowed to scrape the mansion and to subdivide that one and a half acre lot into individual lots which exponentially increased the value of that property because new builds in that neighborhood were selling for over a million dollars for 5,000, 6,000 square foot lot. So there was an opportunity here for me to reposition that, find the highest and best use and create a deal, which is exactly what I did. So I ended up locking the deal up for 900K with an extended due diligence period. 
in that time, what I did is I went to the city and I found out uh, exactly what was going to be required to re-entitle the, the, the land and do a lot split and separate those into seven or eight different lots. Once I found out that that was doable, I didn't go, I didn't go ahead and do it. But once I was given the, the knowledge that it was doable, I then was selling the property, not as a mansion, but as a one and a half acre redevelopment play, I ended up wholesaling that deal for a million dollars. I got a hundred thousand dollar assignment fee on that deal that no one touched for six months. That's why guys changing the angle of the deal, finding the highest and best use for the property will always make you maximum dollars. Leveraging social media. So for those of you that don't know me, I probably over the last year just kind of blew up in the social space, right? Before then, nobody knew who I was. I kept a very low profile, I was quiet. Um, and I did that on purpose because I was building a business and I was, I was enjoying the anonymity of that. Um, but since then, I've really been leveraging social media to not only build the brand, but also to um, just maximize and increase the number of deals we're doing. I can't tell you guys enough how many deals are done in Facebook groups. I want all of you watching today to do this. Add yourself to the Wholesale Hotline Live Facebook group. Deals are being done in that group every single day. Add yourself to Pace Morby's Creative Finance group. Deals are being done every single day. You are not an island. You are a social person in a social network and people of like mind in the same business are constantly communicating with each other in these Facebook groups and you are leaving low hanging fruit to be eaten up by your, com your, your competitors if you are not leveraging these very effective tools. So guys, make sure you're adding yourself to as many Facebook groups as possible. Post, comment, don't be the weirdo in the group. Be polite and cool to everybody, but, but leverage them, guys. Make sure you're leveraging. Again, the name of those two groups were Wholesale Hotline Live on Facebook, and also Pace Morby's Creative Finance Group on Facebook, one of the most active and special groups I've ever seen. You're gonna love it. You'll thank me for it later. Um, the follow-up, all right, this again is super key. Uh, as you all know, if you're in acquisitions, 70% you, of your deals are gonna happen on the follow-up. The same thing with buyers, all right? 70% of your sales are gonna happen on the follow-up. So if your buyers don't respond, hit them again. Keep trying. You don't want to look desperate, but you also want to make sure they're seeing what you're sending them. So make sure you're following up, but don't do it more than one time because you don't want to look crazy. You don't want to look desperate because then it, your deal doesn't look good, but make sure you are following up one time after you send your buyers a property to look at. And then lastly, make sure that you're giving extra special love to your top email openers so if you're using MailChimp, SendGrid, or Infusionsoft, uh, and you see that there are chronic openers of your emails, reach out to those guys. Call them, hang out with them, be their friend, because they care about you. They're looking at your deals. They're either your competition, and if they are, find a way to squat up and work with them, or they're your buyers and they're interested. So find a way to connect deeper with them. Remember, relationships are about going deep, not wide. Okay, so get deep with your people, get deep with your buyers, learn their kids' names, figure out when their birthdays are, send them cards, be their friends, and don't be phony about it, really care, because that's what sells. That's what's gonna actually have people care about you is when you care about them. Um, but make sure you're reaching out to those people often and you're, and you're forming that relationship because uh, honestly, guys, it's those people that are, that are engaging with you. They're the ones that you want to be focusing your time on. And then you want to, you know, vet your list so that you're removing people that don't care, aren't engaging, so that you can send your emails to people that are engaging. Your email providers will block you and you're more likely to go into spam if you have a low open rate. So making sure you're continuously fixing your list, removing guys that aren't opening, 
and, and then adding new buyers that are and making sure you keep your list vibrant and constantly engaged is going to do wonders for your del deliverability. So that's all I have for the slides, guys. I hope there was some value there. Um, you know, we are absolutely uh, um, just loving dispositions. And if any of you guys have questions about, you know, how to, how to do this at a higher level, reach out to me. Um, some of you might be aware and other, others of you might not, but Kegley just franchised. So we are nationwide now. We are franchising in, in every we are selling franchises in every market. So if you're interested in a Keegley franchise in your market, send an email to franchise at keegley.com. That's franchise at K-E-Y-G-L-E-E.com. Let them know you're interested in the franchise. They'll send you an application and then there's a whole process. And then you and I will hop on a call and see if we'll be a good fit for each other. Um, but that's all I got, guys. I hope, uh, I hope that... Uh, uh, hit home with some of you that was awesome Jamila I know I know it hit home with a bunch of people and I, I was jotting down some notes as well um, but hey guys if you have any questions put them in there and uh, I did want to touch base on some a few things there Jamila the, the photography was on, so on point you know I'm, I'm totally guilty of that same thing of being lazy getting terrible pictures um, and, and you know in the past you, the way you guys do this, it's professional. You're a professional business. You're selling to professional buyers, right? In the past, that wasn't really necessary. You just threw out whatever picture and, and people were buying anything and everything. Well, that, that game is gone. You need right. to be selling. And what sells a house? The pictures. So just like a brand new uh, on the market flip, whenever you're selling a discount property, just get some good pictures, right? I'm, I'm good to get it. <laughs> so, um, Jamil, the, uh, you said something there in Squad Up. Can you explain and share with everybody what you and your market, and Pace and Brent Daniels, and, and what does that mean, you guys squatting up? I mean, it, just to share how big um, of a squad you guys really have as far as numbers and how close you guys work together. You're welcome, Tony. Um, guys, Squad Up is is – I'm going to get that tattooed on me. I'm going to, I'm, one day you're going to see it on Instagram. I'm going to get a big squat up tattoo and everyone's going to be like, he means it. And I do. Um, squatting up is this, right? You got to look at the people that are beside you as adding to you. doesn't matter if you're doing the same business. You can gain from everybody that is in your circle. We all eat from the same trough. Pace is my number one competitor in this market. He's also my best friend. I'm the godfather of his child, right? Um, but how we compete. We compete all the time for the same deal. Uh, but here's what it is. We will find a way to work together. And I will never stab him in the back. And he'll never stab me in the back to try to gain from me to, to, over one another, right? I would way rather him take a deal and, and run with it and then find a way that we can add to each other later on. For example... Um, when, when Pace was at first starting to understand creative financing, um, I wasn't super interested in creative financing. Pace was. And so when I was getting these seller finance deals or these sub two deals, I was just handing them over to Pace. He's gone and run with that and created a massive creative financing empire from it. And because of that, it's led to Keegley Creative, which is where Keegley is actually going to help all of Pace's students and, and his army that he's growing disposition their creative finance wholesale deals. And so that is an example of how we've squatted up. Another example is the wholesale hotline show, right? I'm a coach. Pace is a coach. Brent Daniels is a coach. We're all vying for the same coaching dollars, right? The same students are the same student is going to be someone that's going to either you know work with Brent Pace or me but we looked at it from this point of view and we said you know what guys there's going to be guys that are going to resonate with Pace for what Pace does there's going to be people that resonate with Brent for what Brent does and there's going to be people that resonate with me for what I do and I don't think we need to ever compete with each other why don't we get together and give away as much free content and as much training as we possibly can 
And then if somebody wants to get deeper with us, they can join our coaching, but, but that's not what this is about. This is about delivering value. This is about us being together. And now look, Wholesale Hotline is the number one real estate podcast show out there. We get 20,000 eyeballs on that show every single week. And all we're doing is delivering content. All we're doing is, is providing value to people. And, and that, guys, is the spirit of, of the squad, right? So you are not an island. There is somebody on this Zoom call today that can help you in your business. You just don't know them yet. So what I would say you need to do, everybody who's watching this, whether you're on Facebook or the Zoom call or wherever you are, what you need to do is find out where you're deficient and let people know where you need help. There is somebody out here right now watching this who's amazing at marketing and lead generation. And there's somebody who's amazing at converting those leads and closing those sellers. But those, those two people aren't the same. And so they need to squat up. Those people need to connect and collaborate. So I would say share with each other your deficiencies, share with each other your core competencies, and figure out how you can help each other fill each other's business gaps. When you do that, guys, you create a squad. When you create a squad, you create a field of energy that is unstoppable. That's what's going to propel your business to the next level. That's what's going to propel you and your group to the next level. I can tell you, hands down, it's the only way to thrive. You hit it. You got it, Jamil. And, and that was the main, uh, when you and I met back, gosh, this back in November, I guess, um, in, in Alabama, that is exactly what resonated with me was uh, collaboration over competition. That's why, that's the whole reason why we created REI Live, that, because we wanted to be together, stop working on an island, get together, and there's plenty of deals, there's plenty of money to go around in this business and any business. Uh, so there's no reason to fight each other. There's no reason to be on, on your own. Get together, figure out where you're deficient, and see if there's somebody there that can either partner with you or help you. Uh, and that's what we do here every single day. Um, and you know, you guys do it uh, at a huge scale, giving away massive tons of value on your uh, hotline and, and then your Facebook groups as well. It, and it goes to show that you can give away and you can share and you can still have a very successful business, right? 100%. So that, it, it, exactly. it's, it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing, brother but there's a magic to it. And I believe that the reason why Pace, Brent, and myself have been elevated in the roles that we're in is because we're not out there teaching people how to show up to the show with, with knives and guns in their tool belts ready to like, you know, kill their competition and, and, and take the mountain. What our message is, is hold each other's hands and walk up that mountain together and stand up from the top of that summit and scream. Right. That's the beauty, you know, win, win together. Yep, you got it. And that's what we're here. And hey, if there's anyone out there that's kind of stuck and, and you feel like you, you've hit that wall and you, and you need help and you need somebody to reach out to, uh, reach out in the Facebook group. That's what the RLI group is about. Uh, go ahead and, and ask questions and ask for help. And of course, you know, we have a whole coaching program where we take people one-on-one -on -one and go through a business, but that's not always what you need. You don't need a coach to help you get started. Uh, coaches are there when you are ready and you're moving and you're ready to elevate your game to the next level. So uh, there's plenty of people that on this Zoom call, plenty of people that have never done any deals or just a few deals or massive deals like Jamil, you know, so reach out to somebody that's where you are or where you want to be. Uh, go step by step, and there's somebody there that can help you. So, Ted, put it in the comments there. Collaboration over competition. That's what it is. So, and I, I can tell you guys, I can see from the comments that Ted is writing that this guy right there, he's 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 he is a foundational rock. He's one of those guys that is is gonna do it because he's putting out positivity in the world. He's putting out squad up in the world, and it's going to come back to him in in multiples. And Ted, uh, thank you for being a steward of that energy. Thank you for being a, a steward of that spirit. Uh, I wish you and all of you watching all the success in the world. Absolutely. Hey guys, and I don't see any other questions for Jamil, but listen, he gave 
his Instagram is uh, J D A M J I at Instagram. Go follow him. Send him a message in uh, direct message, and you can get the presentation presentation slides. All of those things. It had the checklist on there. Perfect, perfect things. You you put it in your business right now. Uh, lots of points in there, and of course, this is recorded. Uh, you guys will have, be able to watch this and, and watch it go through it again. So, Jamil, I, I, thank you so much. I, you know, I can't uh, thank you enough for taking time to sit with us and, and absolutely explain what you're doing. So, keep Lee, you know, uh, blessings to you guys. Blessings uh -huh. to you as well. And we look forward to seeing you again when we can travel. <laughs> My man, I can't wait to come out there, brother. All right, man. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. REI Live, woo! All right, REI Live, guys. That's it for tonight. And hey, go bunker up. Looks like another storm coming in. Uh, we are going to show uh, this replay in the REI Live group in just a few days. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.